Kayla, you have been on our championship show so many times before. Do you have any advice here for Jason, who's a newcomer? Just stay calm and have fun. I think that's pretty good advice. That sounds pretty good. Wrong answer. If you guys were on Team Shoe, I'd be teaching you guys how to cheat. Lob the ball. Throw a fourth ball when nobody's looking. But don't get caught. My team has integrity. Life is fun, and so is Candlepin Bowling. There have been dozens of bowling shows on TV before, but we're not them, and we don't want to be. Dan Shu Gothi, our coaches one team of talented kids, and I, Rob Taylor, coach another. We're a different type of show, and we're going to turn your notion of bowling show upside down. We are the new generation. to Candlepin New Generation, a show that takes kids who aspire to be president and encourages them to settle for Candlepin Bowling's stardom. I'd still vote for him, Rob. Liam, 2044. He's Dan Gauthier. I'm Rob Taylor. We have two teams of two talented 11 and under bowlers bowling for our championship. Dan's coaching one team. I'm coaching another. Dan's team took me down last week. Why don't you tell us who they are? This team took down your last team, and they're going to take down your champions yeah, we'll again see. here, we'll Rob. See. We'll see. Start off with Jenna Ward. Jenna, she may look like a kitten, but she bites like a tiger. Threw a 97 last week for us, which was 23 pins over her average. She pulls out of Hobbs Lucky Strike Lanes. Hobbs Lucky Lanes. Maine. Up in Maine. Maine, you got Up it. Up in Maine, as does her partner. Uh, she averages 74. I'm looking for her to throw another game in the 90s or maybe even 100 this time. Top make it a little easier on her partner, William Merrill. William Merrill always on the leaderboard in every state event up in Maine. We're privileged to have him here today. He's very calm, throws a slight right to left hook. You can look for his ball to get a lot of action if it's in the 1-3 pocket, Rob. He was also in the 90s last time, but I think now that he's warmed up, I'm expecting him to put a game up over 100 and put the pressure off squarely on your team. I hope not, but even if he does, we can take him. I've got Michaela Tort a lot. She has bowled in our championships in the past several years, three or four, I think. She is going to break through today. She's got a 128 high single. Her favorite film is Teen Beach Movie, and she has an insatiable appetite for victory. She's partnered up with Jason Loggerblade. He is a newcomer, but he threw the highest single on the show in the 11 and under age group this year. He's also a getaway artist. He's a biker, and he claims to really be able to run quickly backwards according to his stat sheet. <laughs> so if we get in trouble, we are getting out of here. It's championship time today, folks, so we're going to send it over to our sideline reporter, Liam Fitzgerald-Ledger. Liam, why don't you give us the stakes? There's no tomorrow for this bowling shrub. Well, there probably is, but they probably have to go to school. That they do, and we all have work in the morning tomorrow, so let's not wait any longer. Ladies may take the lane, Michaela Tortolot and Jenna Ward. Michaela Tortolot is in the yellow and black, Jenna Ward is in the orange, and Michaela is throwing out the first ball. Go get him, Michaela. Your bowlers may be good at running backwards, Rob, but mine are good at bowling, and Jenna is also good at horseback riding. Yeah, jeez. Multi-talented. I didn't know they had horses in Maine. A horse probably doesn't even notice she's on her back. I mean, look at Jenna. The Hold trophies are bigger than Jenna. Michaela looking to home in. She's starting on the right. I'm trying to make a few adjustments. And Jenna's going to have to make a little adjustment here, too. She started off with a bang in the last match. Maybe a little bit of nerves. Michaela Not on team just shoot. off. Tough six to start on. No the nerves gates. allowed on team shoot. There we go. There you go. Yeah, look at nicer. that. Now so Jenna's six apiece early. Now she's homing in. Throw that same ball and nice spare leave out of it. Michaela Tortolot has been with the show for years. She started at an extremely young age in the show. That one gets away from her a little bit. She's going to find it over the course of the match. This is her last year in this 11 and under age group, one that she has owned for the past half yeah, decade. It feels like decade. she's been in the 11 and under age group for 10 years bowling with us. Right. Ball is creeping right. Hopefully she finds a way to make a little adjustment. That's get that new. Ball to curve I don't remember in. her ball going left to right, so it's probably not what she's trying to do. Maybe it's going to fix that wrist twist a little bit. As the kids get older, sometimes they get a little stronger. The mechanics change up a little bit. Now she's making a good adjustment. That's a great out for Michaela. Awesome nine. I'm proud of her. Not only does she make sure the match doesn't get away from her too early, she picks up an early three-pin lead. Yeah, Jenna with the back-to-back -back sixes, but she'll be thinking about how her favorite pro, Mark Smith, would deal with a couple of bad boxes and try to come back focused, hit the head pin. We saw what she was capable of last yeah, week on the program. great the last game. Absolutely great. Michaela on the right side, pins toppling. And this is a makeable spare lead for Michaela, especially with her left to right hook. 
now I say she just has to hit that wood in front. She's going to try to have her ball tail back. Just misses the cap. See, Jenna's ball also has some left to right spin on it. She throw, starts off throwing the ball a little bit right to left and hopes it bites back. So for her to be successful, she has to throw the ball as if she's aiming at the one-two pocket. Right. right now she's kind of aiming at the three pin and it's not making it all the way to the left like it needs to. That was a pretty good ball there. It's cooking back. She gets a seven out of it. So an early five pin lead and four pin lead rather in favor of Tortolot and Lager Blade. Lager Blade, that has to be one of my favorite names we've ever had on the show. It seems like it should be a hockey documentary or something, you know? <laughs> Lager Blade. Jenna. Just a little off that pocket. Michaela now, ball breaking back towards that head, and both of our ladies just a little bit off. And in this younger age group, you don't quite get the same type of action off the head pin that we're going to see some of our older bowlers get in the next couple of weeks. And, uh, Jenna is looking to pick up the reverse spread eagle on her last ball. So easy to throw when you've got all <laughs> the pins up there. Very difficult when they're the only ones left. So one box remains here for our two ladies, both of them trying to get heated up late, trying to get a little momentum going to hand it over to their gentlemen partners. Still only five pins. Okay, love here's a little bit right. Here we go. Jenna. Oh, Ooh, so I thought off. that was going to be good when she let it go. Didn't have much tail back. Didn't have the tail like some of her other balls. It's one or the other, right? Either you're too far right and you get a lot of tail, or when you finally get one to the left, doesn't have enough. And this is too Both far right. Both taking it easy on the other, I think. Yeah. Polite well, match. Friend. They're friends. There it is for Michaela. She's looking for the out. She's on it. Well, only got eight. A little too full there. It's a good third Jenna, ball. Jenna, meanwhile, gets a very nice nine. So 39 to 35 at the halfway point. And now Jason Lagerblade and William Merrow take the lane. This gives us a chance to take a look at our keys to the game. For my team, it's make quick adjustments up there. It's only one string for the title, so if something's not working for you, got to be able to make that adjustment fast. We'll see if our ladies can do it in the second half. What is your advice to your team, Dan? My advice is simple, Rob. Become world champions. World champions? I mean, the game's really only played in the New England region, maybe the Canadian Maritimes. World champions, Rob. Uh, I guess we'll lie about it, just like baseball does. Our gentlemen going for their outs. Nice little nine by Jason. And a nice little nine by Mara. Good first boxes for our gentlemen as they look to home in. Close four pin match. Nobody's getting away in this one. That's a nice ball for Jason. Jason has a large left to right hook. Yeah. Ball looks like it's going at the four pin, cuts to the head pin, and now he's getting some nice late action over there. Williams found it as well, buries it. Jason's all over it. Nice shot by Lagerblade. He fires the first march of our match. Tough Meanwhile, where are you playing here. this for William? You know, if I'm him, I throw the ball a little harder than him. I, I want to hit it on the left side of the six pin, throw the six off the wall and back. Oh. Yeah. And then he, he was going for there. Yeah, he definitely was going. Because he had wood touching the back of it. So it's going to really help it go horizontal, you know, like off the right wall and come all the way back if he can do that. Even if he hit the right side of it, go directly over into the seven. Would have helped a lot. I think William... May have thought Jason was supposed to throw the ball there. He's waiting to finish his box. He gets eight. He's gathering his socks, dude. Take a deep breath. That one's a tough one. Was, especially for such a good first ball. You don't want to see that. Hey, there's a big break here. Jason finds that quarter pocket. Gets a nice little six on it. Anytime you see Jason let that ball go way to the left, I automatically assume he's going to have a good ball. That's right. Because it tends to have so much bite back. And this one gets a little away from him on the left side. William looking to clean up the cluster on the left side, hoping to hit the head pin full. He is, and he leaves just uh, the four. Re a really good effort. Great eight by Jason. A lot of ways you can get through holes up there on that attempt. William does what he did so well last week, getting tens. So this match evened right back up. Oh, almost, almost the same uh, triangle he had before. Now he's at a diamond. Right, he's able to make it earlier. Oh, a few extras for Team Shu. Jason's breaking in. Great attempt. Yeah, really. Need to be he's a little bit the body English to try to get it in there a little more. This is one William can make if he can get on the head pin again. He's on it. Once That's, again, uh, no luck. Two boxes in a row. I think 
Team Shoe this week is having the same bad luck that your team had last week, Rob. We're still waiting for our break. An early nine pin difference with one box to go. William continues to get out, get out of his boxes with uh, eight or better every box and almost all nines and tens. That makes a big difference. Jason Ball breaks in there, leaves five. William a little off. Oh, uh, looks good. Another object pin hit. Oh, too full this time. Jason is throwing a great ball. This is his first time on our show. His average is only a 72 out of Alley Cat Lanes down in Kingston. Well, Alley Cat, as you found out, we pulled together there a month Tough ago. House. Not the easiest Honest. place. Honest house. Honest. You really got to bury the ball good. So Jason comes out of the half with a 51. That's His a team out. is at 90. On the other side, 80. Four? No, just 80. 80. 10 pins the difference. We're going to watch our Beat the Pro segment, see if one of our contestants can take down Craig Holbrook. Woburn Bulladrome, established in 1940, has 40 lanes with automatic scoring, including bumper lanes, glow bowling, and more, featuring four different birthday party packages. If you bring the cake, we'll do everything else, including food, drink, and paper goods. Come spend your Friday and Saturday nights with us when the lights go off and the music and fun go on. Enjoy our game room, check out our pro shop, or join a winter league. We're right by I-93 and I-95 with plenty of parking available. Woburn Bulladrome. For more info, go to www.woburnbowl.com. So for the show this year, Dan, I really want it to be about empowering the kids, you know? For kids, by kids. By kids? How's that gonna work? Positions, people, positions, people, places, people, places. All right, guys, pizza's ready. Pizza! The Beat the Pro Challenge is brought to you by ASG Bull, the exclusive representative for the BPAA Smart Buy program, insurance solutions for the Candlepin proprietor. Welcome back to Candlepin New Generation. It is time for our weekly Beat the Pro segment. Richie Sproul is going to try to take down Craig Holbrook. Dan is with Richie. Thanks, Rob. As you said, I'm here with Richie. He's going to be bowling for a chance to win this brand new set of Paramount bowling balls today. Richie, as we've seen in these matches in the past, it usually takes a mark to win. In a typical string, about how many marks would you say you throw? Uh, two or three. So that gives you about a 30% chance of beating him. You feeling confident? Yeah. All right. We're going to see what Rob has to say about Craig's chances of beating you. At least Richie Craig has feels. a chance. Craig, you've been in some big matches over the years. Do any of them stand out? Any big memories in the Candlepin Bowling World? Absolutely. The 1998 World Candlepin Championships, the team championships, and we were in the finals 1998, and we won. And I bowled a really good score that day, so I was really happy with that. Well, let's see if you can bowl a really good score in this box. Craig is going to take on Richie. Craig, you're up first. Best of luck. Richie's going to come up with us. Let's hear it for Richie, everybody. <laughs> I'll let you sit in between. And we thank Craig for joining us here today. The way this works, they're each going to throw a box. Richie is going to have to beat Craig outright unless Craig throws a mark, in which case we'll allow a tie. Craig's first ball back on the head pin, just like last week. A little tougher shot this time. Yeah, I mean, that's going to make you feel pretty good, huh? What do you think his chance of making this is? Pretty good. Pretty good. Like, give him 80%? Yeah. Dan and his numbers, Craig. Ah, almost. So. so once again, he's looking at a single pin. Worst case here is you're going to need a spare to win if he picks this up. How's yeah. that make you feel? I might do it. You say you got a better chance if he misses it, though, right? Just need a 10? Yeah. Craig is all over all right, that 10. He's putting better. on a clinic, so Richie Sproul is going to need a mark to win a set of bowling balls. Noticing no a pattern here, Rob. Every bowler in the kids is going to have to throw a mark by the way it's going. Craig's been on his object each hey, time, too, in each of the two weeks. Good That's why he's in. one of the best. You saw him pick the 10 pin last week, now he picked the 7 pin this week. Yep. Richie's just off the head pin, so he's looking at a four horseman for a chance at a set of bowling balls. Richie is from All Play Entertainment Center up in Maine. He is eligible for this because he went most over average in one of our tournaments. Looking for this four horseman, and he's got it! So Richie has a shot at a set of bowling balls. We'll see if any other kids can do it. And we'll see how our kids do after the break. Welcome back to 
candle pin new generation 10 pins the difference we are going to send it over to our sideline extraordinaire liam fitzgerald ledger each bowler has five boxes to the championship rob it should be exciting thank you liam let's have our ladies take the lanes Jenna Ward versus Michaela Tortolot in a 10 pin match in favor of Michaela. Michaela in the black and yellow, Jenna in the orange. Jenna throwing out our first ball. And she's off the headpin, but this time she gets a little bit more to show for it. Michaela's also getting a few extras tumbling. She's going to hope that wood rolls yeah, back to give her a clean look at or, this. Or out of the way, right? Like you said, back. Jenna squeaks Ooh, just past. Just Great past try. It. Michaela, is she over it? She's on the wood. Uh, just wasn't out in the wood front wasn't enough. wasn't close enough. Jenna picks up the nine. Michaela homes in on a nice ten. Looks like she might have found it. She struggled yeah. early on in our match. She might have made an adjustment. And both girls with a good first box. I think they both made some adjustments there. As you saw, uh, Jenna was barely off. Very close. So here, here she we goes, go. and she's right back on that head pin. Oh, oh no, Rob. Nothing to show for it. A little better. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. A little nicer now, but not by much. This is near impossible. She's uh, maybe going way low on that wood. She might have been. Michaela on the head pin, punches straight through. And so now Jenna just really wants to get two we'll out of this get if she eight. can. Yeah, eight would be, be a nice box here. Uh -oh. And she gets one. The ball bounces a lot off of those woods, doesn't it? Kayla gets one as well. 12. Slowly adding to it. Jenna would love to get in a mark here to really get things back into single digits. We also have Jason and William talking back here. It looks like we may have a pair of friends made at this event. It's <laughs> always a good thing. I think it's just strategy by Team Shu. Or trash talking. Yeah. I don't no, trust No, it's him. not trash. It might be trash just talking. Let, you know, false sense of security. Let them think that they got it made. Kayla and squeaks aside there. This four horsemen. Has that extra guide wooden back. If she's full, it might have a shot. Oh, she's got it, Rob. Oh, oh no! Oh, you jinxed What her. happened? What happened? She had that wooden back and that ball just deflected left. I forget sometimes that her ball is so slow that with that wooden back, it just deflected the ball completely off of the off of the line. A oh, great 10 by Jenna. That's a very, very big 10. That 10's going to be just like a small mark in this box. It is. Michaela gets seven, so she tips three off that 12-pin deficit, brings it to nine. I can't believe that. I, I kind of liked how she hit it. I thought you had to be full, because yeah. with the wooden yeah, back, you exactly. couldn't be in the pocket. Think of the way me or you throw, right? You, you pound that full, you're probably going to run them all down. Well, next week, we're going to see some bowlers with a little bit more velocity. We'll take a look at our 12 to 14 age group next week. Jenna might not be using uh, the heaviest ball you can use either. When you're it's younger. not like 10-pin where you have a big 10-pound variation of balls, but we do have a few ounces you can play with. And in all likelihood, she's probably using a lighter ball. Michaela looking to run this down. She's on it and she carries it. That's a pretty shot for Michaela. Looks like her ball might not have been hard enough to get it. Her ball <laughs> slowly just plowed its way through. Luckily for her, there were only three pins there. That's right. The ball was about to deflect off the fourth one and bounce back. As we take another look at it, Michaela on that three pin and picking up the spare. So now she has a chance with a nice fill here can really bump up this lead. And Jenna, despite being at 68 after 9, is still heading right for her average of 74. She's not having a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. She, she just had great an last awesome week. game last week. Well, that one gets away from Michaela. So we've seen what William can do. He's done a great job picking up 10s today. If he can turn some of those into spares, he's going to have a shot at making the comeback. And winning all the state's events like he has. Um, I mean, he knows what it's like to come from behind. I'm sure he's done it in the past. Michaela has that ball cut left to right. Like I said, he, six. he put up a big uh, 125 game recently, William did, in state, so we can duplicate that. And an eight for Michaela. And so our gentlemen take the lanes. No shame in how Michaela closed out her 11 and under career with an 83. Absolutely. Good second half, especially. She got better in the second half, and that's what a lot of it's about. So the difference at 16, William is looking to start chipping into it. He's going to start with a four horseman he'll need to run down. Jason, meanwhile, is about to get away from him a little bit. So a chance for William to really make an early statement in this half. On the nice. head pin, and yeah. runs it down. Jason's right on his as well. Hits the object pin, but it's going to be tough for him to do we'll much see. better than eight on this. And it's exactly what William was hoping would happen. Not only do you make your spare, but your opponent gets a very tough leave. Tough to get out of it good, and he struggles against a six. So that drops it down to 12, minus this ball, where William is going to need to just pretty much do the same thing. A little anxious, threw the ball quick there.
but four horsemen. He's got one more. Nine back. pins off the lead by a uh, 15 to a six in that box. So now Jason taking his time. So now it's down to a 12 point deficit for Team Shoe. William tosses the ball, looking for the mark, a little off. William a little anxious. No, just letting Jason catch up on balls. There we go. And Jason just a little bit off. William now looking for the out. Get away with the eight, so now a chance for Jason to maybe get one back. Or right, he could go wide and lose one too. Ball does go wide. So a tough start here for Jason in the second half. He threw a phenomenal first half. And now he's gonna do a very difficult thing and close. Five, we have a five pin match here, Rob. William on the four William, pin. Just one mark behind at this point with a five pin deficit. Or especially in this age group, just a 10 and a yeah, tough box for the other bowler. Three tens in a row or a couple nines and a 10. Come and, very important. And William is gonna pin well on this box. Jason looking to bounce back. He's having a tough time finding his ball here. And I'm sure that William's noticing that. And that's why he wants to put those nines and tens. Builds the confidence a little bit. This looks like a good ball by Jason. Now he's in there. Even though he lost the pin, though. that was a big ball. He didn't want to lose all the lead in one box. Four pin lead. So two boxes remaining. Four pins the difference as we look to crown the 11 and under candle pin new Ooh. generation champions. That looked like a good ball coming out of his hand, but it had more hook than normal on it for Williams. Well, one mark was on that four horseman. Jason right in there. Give him a break. Needed that. Four pin to fall. It might have taken down something else. And great shot by William Merrill. Yes. Clutch. I have to think he's probably, William Merrill might be a little more comfortable shooting at four horsemen on the right side because his, the way his ball, ball has a little bit of left break, tail. so break right into the pocket on a good ball. Jason so let's looking see for the, the out. Be. Yeah, very nice too, that could be big later. So a three pin, so three if he fills it with this. three it would be an even game, anything beyond that gives him the lead. And he got a very favorable nice break. drop because if, I'm, if, I, if you were to ask me what I would have guessed he would have gotten on the ball he just threw, I would have said a three. He was full. <laughs> so now Jason may need to mark, and a half Worcester is going to make it tough. William with a chance to really clinch this. What a shot by Merrow! And so Jason needs this to have a shot. What a shot he puts by it Jason! In there. They're Look at this drop. Get over! Come on! Oh, what an effort! What an attempt by Jason. Oh, he tries to hold on late. With see the look on his face. A oh. fantastic bid. But instead, William Merrow is yeah. going to have the chance to throw the victory ball. He completes a sensational comeback. Hobbs William Lucky Merrow. Lanes will be proud of these guys today. Merrow drops six at the end for a huge 109 game from William Merrow. He and Jenna Ward are an 11 and under champions. Congratulations to them. We will talk to them after the break. Super Bowl in Amesbury, Massachusetts is a premier entertainment center with 24 lanes, the new Mammoth Arcade Room including a 10 foot by 12 foot projection TV, Friday night cosmic bowling, and Saturday night moonlight oldies, there's plenty of attractions. Have your functions and parties with us, with two spacious rooms fitting up to 45 people each, with plasma TVs and DVD sets, a Bose music system, and wireless internet. Bring your food or enjoy a full catering menu with Tony G's Pizza and Deli. That's Leo Super Bowl. For more info, find us on Facebook or go to leosuperbowl.com. When he sees a 7-10 split, he helps them get back together. He always has the right of way. Those shoes, no. The pins don't rob him, he robs the pins. He is the most interesting bowler in the world. I don't always go bowling, but when I do, I go candle pin. Keep bowling, my friends. The difficulty of having so many kids here, Rob, is one of them kicked out our power cord for our microphone. No <laughs> Could have been worse than Michaela getting the high oh! jack. What a shot. Glad we had oh! audio for that one. Look Michaela at Tordelot Look at how jumping happy. up and down. Oh my awesome gosh, shot she's so by Michaela happy. Tordelot. Your turn to try to follow that up, Cody. Cody Gerard on lane 10 right now. 
Gonna see if he can duplicate Michaela Tortolot's shot. That gives her an extra fifty dollars on her gift card. Look oh, he's on it! Oh my God! What a shooter! Oh two in a row! God. Unbelievable! Oh my God! Cody Girard has been doling like for two weeks, and he makes a shot that so many legends never made. Cody Girard, what a shot! Just made that shot. How did you do it? What are you feeling? I don't know. I was just pretty happy after I made it. We are here with Colleen Dumas, and apparently Becky Halvanell doesn't want to get interviewed, but, you know. There she is. Okay, so now I'm interviewing both Becky Halvanell and Colleen Dumas. And now I'm not. And now I am. Well, how does it feel to be O'Malley's sleeper pick? All right. Hear that, O'Malley? All right. So you threw a giant game back in the States. You want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, I'd rather talk about my partner. He had a 161 that game, and he gets overshadowed. But he had an awesome game. Any other year, he would have had the top. Welcome back to Candlepin New Generation. Team Chu, Team Main, Jenna Ward, and William Merrow are our 11 and under champions. Congratulations to them. Dan, you've got Jenna. He's holding the trophy that's a little bigger than she is. Jenna, I'm so proud of you guys, man, making Team Shoot 2-0 in the playoffs. Improving my record a ton. I'll be looking forward to getting my coach's trophy from Rob after this. So thank you guys See, for winning that for me. You're welcome. <laughs> How does it feel to be champions? Happy. <laughs> I bet, huh? What was going through your head watching your uh, partner come up there? You know he was down about 12 pins or so to start his last half, right? Yeah. What were you thinking in the last couple boxes when he was making those spares? I thought that we were going to make it when he got all those spares. Nice. When you walked into the bowling alley today before you threw a ball, did you guys think you'd be world champions at the end? Yes. So you're confident all the way, huh? Will you think you'll bowl with William again sometime in some state championships this year? Yes. That'll be awesome. Good luck to you guys moving forward. They're a pretty well, formidable duo, Dan. Oh, there's a great team. I, I can't wait to hear what William has to say about his clutch marks on the end. William, heck of a comeback. Did you know how much you were trailing by going in at the half? Uh, not really. I didn't look. What was your plan? Just, did you have any plan for the comeback or just hit, throw one ball at a time? Hit the head pin, get as many pins as I can get. What went through your head in those last two boxes as he picked up those big marks? That I was going to win. That's <laughs> what you did. You guys are going home with a pair of trophies from Din Trophy and $50 gift card. So congratulations to both of you guys. They are our 11 and under champions out of Hobbs Lucky Lanes. They were a treat, Dan. Next week it's going to be the 12 to 14 age group. And I think we've, uh, we've got some more exciting bowling ahead of us. World champions, Rob. Proud of these guys. From Dan Gauthier and our entire volunteer staff, we are at Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts, and we thank you for joining us this week. You can see all of our episodes on CandlepinGeneration.com. Be sure to tune in next week to check out our 12 to 14 semifinals. Along the outside, Dan Gauthier, I'm Rob Taylor. You've been watching Candlepin New Generation. Uh, you just did pr something pretty special just a few minutes ago. Want to talk about it? Throw a 170 game. And is that your highest single? Yes, it is. So, what was the what was the big point of the string for you? When I did the triple to end it, it felt just amazing that I was able to actually get the high game because anytime I was close to getting it, I'd always just struggle in my head and then just mess up.